Uh, okay, I want to move. I, I'm not sure that I entirely understand, but I'm going to read it. Hi, my daughter, when she uh, feels bad or doesn't want to follow instructions, she goes into the washroom wash room sometimes every minute. Uh, from the from last year, my daughter always cut her hair. Uh, when uh, whenever whenever we grow her hair, most of the time I hide the scissors, but uh, she used the kitchen scissors. So what do I do? I think that those are related, but they are actually two separate things because they were written in two separate parts, Evelyn. So if, if uh, what do we do for somebody who's feeling nervous and um, every time they feel nervous, they get up and go to the washroom and then it can be as much as uh, once a, a minute. And what do we do? For, we do ha we've do. we had many kids uh, since we've been doing Autism Live that um, are obsessed with cutting their own hair or cutting other people's hair. Um, and that, you know, if they can't do it themselves, they love to watch videos about it. It is a thing that some of our kids, uh, we have a mom that we love that from the very beginning of Autism Live, we call her haircut mom because uh, you know we, we never want to disclose any, who anybody is, but when somebody is writing about something, we sometimes will call them a name that we know that won't identify who they are. But so she is known as haircut mom because her son was obsessed with cutting hair. Um, so uh, what what do we do for those kiddos in both of those? Okay, instances? so uh, it's a coping mechanism, right? Going to the washroom when you're nervous. And um, you, if you really wanna target, you need to look at what situations it happens in because it's a, probably a lot of different situations. So there's not gonna be one way of addressing it, okay? but. Let's say it, ha like I had a kid who, <laughs> he used to do it during recess. And we actually, he would, he would use the first probably five minutes of recess to basically psych himself up. And then he'd come out and he'd be like, he'd have all this, like the order of who he was gonna go see on the playground, um, what he was gonna play, what he would say to certain people. And it, it just took some time. And then what we did was we taught him to shorten it. Okay. Like, because that sounds very effective that he was, it was using super effective. time to be very effective. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, it was a coping. Initially, though, a lot of kids use it as a form of escape. It's a situation they're trying to escape because they realize I'm going to be here and I don't know what to do or I don't like what's going on or there's a noise or whatever it may be. And if I go to the washroom, no one tells me I don't I can't go. It's the one place where if you say you have to go there, no one's going to say really no to you. They better and not. <laughs> it's because, yeah, because it's a legitimate need if the need is actually there, but only that person's going to know if the need is there. <laughs> so if you feel like it has turned into an escape behavior or an avoidance behavior, then you need to evaluate each of the situations it comes in. So it really is going in and, you know, we talk about the ABCs, the antecedents, the things that happen behavior, what is actually happening, the behavior as she leaves. And then when she comes back, you know, what is, what's the consequence? So one consequence is she leaves and she just feels better because she's out of a situation that she didn't know what to do in. Um, but you take each of these situations and you, you have to really look at the situation and decide what skills is she missing? Does she have all the skills that she needs for this situation? Like for a lot of kids, if they don't know how to do something and a lot of our kids are really black and white and want to be perfect, you know, they very inflexible. So if they see that, oh, you're playing a game and they don't want to lose, they get, you know, they get out of there. And one way to get out of there is to go. Or if they maybe are seeing a person that they know is going to ask them a lot of questions that they don't want to be asking, they're going to leave. So then you can teach them ways where they can control the conversation and they can ask some questions so that the other people can answer. And it's not just all one way where they're getting everything. It could be there's a situation where it's just loud, you know, some kind of sensory aspect of the environment. And one way they leave is they can just close the door and they just feel a lot better and it blocks out the noise, the light, or the smell, whatever it is. So you really have to look at each situation and see like, what is she escaping? And does she have the skills for that situation? And a lot of there are kids who do that kind of leaving, who come and go and have that ability. They do, a lot of them have it because in social situations, it's not like where adaptive routines we have. When you brush your teeth, you can brush them one way, the same way, and it doesn't really matter. But in real life social situations, we don't talk about things that stay the same. We talk about things that are different. 
we talk about things that are odd or, you know, didn't work the right way. And if you talk to a lot of like my, my, I remember the first time I had a teenager tell me, I like talking about how the grass is green and the sky is blue <laughs> because it's always like that. And he just really loves that. But mm -hmm. if you went out and you saw a friend and you said, hey, the grass is green, they'd kind of look at you like, yeah, I know that. Like, why are you telling me the grass is green? Now, if you told me the grass is purple, let's go look at it and let's see what that's like. But it, but it was really interesting the first time I had a kid tell me, no, I actually like talking about the things that always stay the same. And then I had to tell him, I said, okay, so that's something that you like, but did you know all these other people? They, when, when they want to carry on a conversation, they talk about things that change, are different, new things that are happening in their life, new, you know, just the newness is what you're sharing. And, you know, and it goes into perspective taking because they don't understand the perspective of someone else. But it can go, it, it can be an opening, but a lot of times it's teaching them some skills too teaching them how to ask questions, teaching how for them how to tact, like if they really, to make a comment about a situation where it is along the lines of what they like about something. Or um, if you look at seven-year-old boys on playgrounds, they don't ask questions. They're constantly just pointing and telling you what they like. Check it out, look at that, blah, blah, blah. So-and-so just fell down. Like, you know, there it's a constant stream of just commenting. And a lot of times, um, with us, with our kids, you know, we kind of go to the question answer mm -hmm. method action and little kids don't do that really. <laughs> so you have to look at how old this child is too and what, you know, do they have the skills for that setting? If you are not sure, just go out and listen to all the kids that are at that age, you know, in your neighborhood, in your school, and you'll just start thinking about, you know, write down everything that you hear and then go back and listen and it's like, can my kid do these skills? Can they ask these questions? Can they make comments on what they hear, what the environment shows? And then that might give the child more skills and teaching them that skill to be able to be used in those situations so they don't have to escape. And then as far as the haircutting thing, and as, as after I said this out loud and I was like, yeah, some of our kids are obsessed with cutting hair and yeah, it's some of our kids. And then of course I, I need to own up to the fact that in COVID this is, you know, I almost had to have an intervention because I kept shaving my head and cutting my hair off. Um, and I will say, uh, I'm willing to, I've talked before on the show about the fact that I have, you know, varying, depending on the day, varying degrees of OCD and, you know, previous panic disorder. But I will tell you that the thing that I learned through cognitive behavioral therapy is that OCD for a lot of people, maybe not everybody, it's a and certainly for me is about when I feel like I don't have control over something, I look for the minutest thing that I can have full control over. Um, and I will stress out about that. And I can cut my hair. I cannot fix COVID. I cannot make sure that you get all the ABA that you want. And I stress out about that. So I will, instead of, you know, being on my little habit trail about that, about how can I get all the people on here, all the ABA that they need, I go, look at that little tuft of hair. I'm going to go cut that off. Well, um, just to interrupt you a little bit. Yeah. It is another sim simple situation that typical, like four and five-year-old kids go and cut their hair, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's, an in it's a test of cause and effect. There you go. <laughs> Some of our kids will cut and just oh, wow, it's an easy way to just the cause and effect. It's like, yeah. a, in fact, you push a button, something pops up. I take a pair of scissors and I snip my hair and it's short now. Yeah. And it's like, this is amazing. And then when, the, and for a typical kid, when they realize it just doesn't grow back, <laughs> that's when they have their issue. Um, yeah. But for a lot of kids, it is about our kids. It is about control. Give them, I'm always with the kids who want control. I always talk to parents about, what part of their life, what can you give them where the, it is theirs? They need something that they control completely. And sometimes it is like, you know, when their hair, a lot of times actually I've redirected it to dolls. And they yeah. can and do whatever they want to their doll's hair, to their, you know, I don't care. And it does work and it's just redirected. Um, there are a group of kids though that the sensory issue of hair bothers them. And yeah. the fact that it hits their neck or whatever it is. And so you, you really want to go and look at that too. 
because there are some kids that always want their hair pulled back. And the minute it is down, they're trying to get rid of it. And that's a quick way of getting rid of it too. I also want to know, cause you know, I'm all big on the toy thing. And um, one of the toys that across the last couple of years, autism parents have said to us that their kids really love are those LOL surprise dolls. Um, and that they're, they're, I know from art classes that there are minds that think uh, one of two ways. And if you put clay in front of somebody, um, you know, if they will sculpt the clay to make it into something and put it together and add to it, right? That's one way of thinking. And then there are other people who want to take the clay away to reveal something that's there. And that's an entirely different way of thinking. And that for many people, the taking away is a very satisfying thing. So like my son has a 3D printer and it's this joke between us because he'll print something and it has all these supports and you have to peel the supports away to reveal the thing that he printed. It's my favorite thing on the planet. Oh, my I favorite th- thing, <laughs> right? I just like, I, he, he'll, he'll go, mom, I got a present for you. And it's this thing and it'll take me days to clear it away, but it's so satisfying to me. And it's the same thing with those LOL dolls. They, they take layer after layer and their little surprises built into it. So, um, you know, if my son gives me lots of three, 3D things to print, my hair gets longer. I'm just saying, uh, try an LOL doll and see if your kiddos like it. Um, and they have some that are different. Um, uh, in any case, something to consider. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.